I call the Minister for International Development and the Pacific. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. And of course, the opposition continues to be in denial about what has occurred uh, in this very difficult year for Australia and the globe. Um, we know there's been a global pandemic here in the Morrison government. We've been dealing with it all year. But if you look at the structure of Australia, and the Deputy Leader of the Opposition discovered here in his speech today that we are indeed a federation, Australia has led the way in how federations have dealt with what is the most challenging set of circumstances that we have faced in a long time. Other societies in the world today haven't coped as well as our society has. And that's because of the cohesion of the national cabinet, of the states and territories working together with the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth's leadership in providing the certainty that the people needed in Australia in terms of handling uh, an evolving and difficult situation. And Mr Deputy Speaker, it's important to note that since the beginning of this, since Australians were advised that they needed to reconsider their need to travel overseas, 432,000 Australians have returned home. Almost half a million Australians have come home, and we welcome them home. And we have done everything possible within the evolving situation of the pandemic to ensure that people can get home. That isn't easy when the entire globe has been closed. That isn't easy when all airlines have had to reduce the number of flights, cancel flights, increase costs of operation, and of course deal with rolling restrictions and changes in multi-jurisdictional situations from nation states around the world. And for the opposition to pretend that somehow this has been a failure of this government again ignores the fundamental situation, the challenge posed by a pretty unique pandemic, a one in 100 year circumstance. In fact, since the government made its announcement that we would return those people home by Christmas, of course, we've had over 31,900 Australians return on 370 flights, including 11,000 people on 74 government facilitated flights, Deputy Speaker. Uh, ten of these flights have been facilitated since 23 October. They've returned over 1,600 passengers, and there is more to do. When we think almost half a million Australians have wanted to come home because of the work that the government has done, the states and territories have done, the people of Australia have done, and the sacrifices they've made, we are a safe harbour in a very difficult world at the moment. And of course, more Australians are going to want to return home, Mr Speaker. And we are going to have to continue to do the work, continue to work with people to get them home as soon as practicable. But given we are now nine months into a pandemic and there is a long time to go until a vaccine is rolled out, we have to work with people as they make their choices. And we have to work with them in a constrained environment where the airline industry is suffering its greatest hit in 100 years as well. And we'll keep doing that. We've worked to ensure the right priorities on returns have been there. And of course, it hasn't been possible to get everybody home when they wanted to. But vulnerable people had to be dealt with first. It was the logical thing to do. It's what the Deputy Leader of the Opposition said we should be doing. And in fact, the government prioritised vulnerable people. Nobody would think otherwise that we shouldn't try and get people with medical needs. We shouldn't get people who had pregnancies, women who had pregnancies. We shouldn't prioritise people who needed to get home first, had to be prioritised. They have been prioritised, Mr Deputy Speaker. And in fact, when you think about half a million Aussies coming home, that is more than our entire migrant intake in a year by far coming back to Australian shores. That's a lot of people coming home. And we understand why more people will seek to come home when we look at second and third waves in Europe, in the US, and the safe harbour that Australia represents. And we will welcome them home and we will work with those communities to get them home. We will get as many people home by Christmas as we can get home from now till Christmas as well. And there are many flights that are booked. There are many people that will come. Uh, there is much work that the Commonwealth and the DFAT will do. And we will keep getting, as these lists expand, more and more people back into the country. Uh, and that's what you would expect. The Deputy Leader of the Opposition, of course, discovered the Constitution in all of this. It is, a, again, I would say to him and I'd say to the opposition, you know, it is not opposition for opposition's sake. This argument they have made today again demonstrates they are not serious about the business of dealing with the number one challenge in front of Australians because they are seeking to undermine 
the work of agencies like DFAT, the, work, the serious work of states and territories, ignore the facts in relation to what has happened in our states and territories, and we make no criticism. States and territories have had to do the things they've had to do, uh, and we have made arguments with them. We have uh, had conversations with them about what we believe settings should be. But when you have an outbreak in Victoria and a quarantine failure in the hotel system operated by the state government, of course, the second major port in Australia was offline for many, many months. The caps were reduced in other states which were dealing with smaller outbreaks and contained those outbreaks. That is supported by Australians. That is supported by us. Uh, and whatever our disagreements about how things should be open and how soon they should be due, the fundamental unity, the fundamental cohesion provided by the National co uh, Cabinet, by the leadership of the Prime Minister, for the leadership of the states and territories in combination with the Commonwealth, has meant that we've had an orderly return of people. It hasn't been perfect, Deputy Speaker, that is true. And there are not many governments, in fact there are no governments, that can point to a perfect record this year. There are not many societies that can point to a perfect record in handling what has been an evolving and difficult challenge. But I can tell you one thing, Deputy Speaker. Australians can be proud of themselves and their government and the cohesion that has been provided by the states, territories, the Commonwealth through the National Cabinet and in service of our citizens. I know the officers of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade have worked tirelessly from the beginning of this pandemic in every consular office around the world to do their absolute best to help Australians stranded in very difficult situations. And when countries, which is their sovereign right, shut their borders, and when countries contained areas, which is their sovereign right to do so to handle the pandemic, many Australians were stranded, Deputy Speaker, stranded. And it was very difficult for everybody concerned. There is no denying it. But our officials worked tirelessly. They did an outstanding job of getting everybody back as soon as they could. They did an outstanding job in providing services. They, did, they do an outstanding job. They know their business, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and they work very, very hard and have stepped up with all of the government's agencies this year. In fact, we can say to the whole public service this year, you have excelled yourselves in serving the Australian people at the Commonwealth and states levels. And we thank everybody who's stepped up this year in doing that. And we say it genuinely, and we should be joined by the opposition. The opposition, of course, supports everything that we are doing to return Australians home in, in actual fact. They're trying to find a point of opposition. There isn't one, Deputy Speaker. They're trying to say something has been done wrong. Nothing has been done wrong, given that this has evolved in a very difficult situation on health advice, on scientific advice, on outbreaks within states, on the lowering of caps. We have to work as a federation together. On balance, Australia has done that better than anywhere else. And we've done that because whatever our arguments, we've retained essential unity. We've stayed together. And our message to the opposition today is do not threaten that unity. We are not out of the woods yet. Don't question that solidarity that Australians have shown at state and federal level, that our public service has shown, that the people want us to keep showing on these essential questions. This is not an issue of partisanship to come in here and say, you know, of course we would love to get people here faster. Everybody knows that. Of course we'd love to move uh, people around the world faster and get them to safety faster. The, the safety on health is the top priority of this government, of Australians here and Australians abroad, and every single day we work on it. And I finalise by saying there are cheap points that can be made by the opposition about our candidacy for the OECD. But I go back to this essential point so that every Australian understands this. The Labor Party supports the government pursuing this candidacy. Not my statement, their statement. They support it. And if they believe that you can legitimately campaign for a, a candidacy of this importance and not spend any money, that's in defiance of their own policy when they were in government and they sought a seat on the, on the Security Council. We know that. The Australian people know that. Again, looking for division where no division exists. They support the government's attempts to secure this candidacy, and it is important, and we hope we can secure it for this country. 
Deputy Speaker, Australians have done an outstanding job this year. We know there are still people that want to get home. We want to get them home. We'll keep working on getting them home. It is a focus of government every day. We'll get as many people home as we can, and we'll keep getting them here, as many as want to come.